Hi, I'm Chris Kristoff, the Director for Professional Development and School Supports. In the next two videos, you will see an effective model for conducting pre- and post-conferences. Ms. Jennifer Rink, Professional Development Specialist for the Central Reason, will be assuming the role of teacher, and I will be assuming the role of principal. In this video, we will be structuring it to hit all the important components that make up an effective pre- and post-conference. This includes, most importantly, the resetting of our professional growth system from purely evaluation to growth mindset. We will be talking specifically about the dominant elements that I will be seeing during the observation. We'll be making strong connections to the deliberate practice goal that Ms. Rink has set for herself this school year. We'll be talking about the differences as we move along the, for the spectrum of the rating scale from beginning to developing to applying to innovating. We'll be talking about the fact that artifacts can be brought into both pre and post conferences to show how the desired effect of each element will be reached. And again, most importantly, we'll be strictly focusing on how we're going to grow in our profession of teaching for the benefit of student learning. We hope you enjoy. Well, good morning, Arsari. So morning. tomorrow is your evaluation, and I wanted to go over some things about, um, you know, how we're going to be conducting this, and it is a little bit different from last year, so I want to go over that before we even start looking at the plan you have ready for tomorrow. So the first thing is, is if you remember last year, we were kind of focused on the evaluation part, and we really didn't do much to establish deliberate practice and establish some of those dominant elements. So there is a little bit of a difference between last year's observation and this year's observation. And I really want to start by talking about the difference between evaluation for evaluation purposes and evaluation truly for growth purposes. So when we talk today, I'm going to be asking you specific questions about where you are in your lesson. Is this new information? Are you deepening information? Um, what prerequisite skills do the students have? Are you having them do a culminating project? What exactly am I going to see? I'm also going to be asking you questions about some engagement techniques you're using and how those routine events like the clear learning goals and scales are going to be covered throughout the, the lesson. So it's going to feel a little different than last year, but it's really about then setting up me to give you meaningful feedback on a few things instead of covering a variety of things. Because as we learn in everything we do in education, if you try to focus on too much, um, it becomes overwhelming. All right. So do you have anything for me? Did you set up the pre-conference form? Okay. Yes, I have a pre-conference form in here, and then I also have um, my lesson plans in here, and then some um, class demographic Perfect. information for you. All right, and you have your own copies, right? Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is, even though you've 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 done a great job filling these out for me, um, there there are some different forms that we've used in the past, and I'm still going to refer to those because those are the ones you're you're comfortable with. But I also, and I see you, you included them, so you must have received yes. my email. Yes. There are some other forms that were located in iObservation um, called the Planning Conference Structured Interview Form and the Post Conference uh, Structured Interview Form. Mm -hmm. And I'm really going to use some questions from both of these forms because um, specifically the Planning Conference Structured uh, Interview Form has some questions that I will need answered to do a better job when I go and observe you and to be able to provide you with some meaningful feedback, okay? Okay. So even though you wrote these out, I'm just going to have you describe them for me um, just to see if maybe I need any additional information. So okay. when we look at your lesson tomorrow um, and we think about the students in your class, mm -hmm. describe um, for this particular, I think I'm coming in second period? Yes. Yeah. So describe for me what the class makeup is in second period. Okay, and um, my second period is eighth grade okay. U.S. history. And in my class, I have 22 students, mm -hmm. um, 12 of which are female and 10 are male. Okay. Within that, I have six ESC students. Um, three of them have the SLD exceptionality, two are language impaired, and one is ASD. Okay. I have one ESOL student and then two 504 students. Okay. Now, does Mrs. Johnson, your support facilitator, come in for any of this period, or I know you're dual, are you dual certified? Yes, I'm dual okay. certified. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. All right. She does provide additional support at different times, so. Good, okay. All right, so when we're thinking about um, this lesson, just before we get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, just tell me about this content. What, 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 what are we going to be, uh, what are the kids going to be learning about tomorrow? Um, well, our, we have our essential, um, uh, our unit essential question mm -hmm. and it's about colonization is okay. the unit that we're in currently right now and the unit essential question is how did European colonization of North America 
play a part in the founding of the United States. So at this point, we've already talked about early colonization, and so now we're moving into the actual English colonies. Mm -hmm. So for when you come in tomorrow, our lesson learning goal is really looking at the um, characteristics of um, New England, Middle, and Southern colonies. Okay, good. Right. Okay. So when we're looking at um, design question one routine events, mm -hmm. setting le clear learning goals, um, tracking student progress, and celebrating success, uh, how will I see or will I see any of that going on tomorrow? You will. Well, we have the learning goal to always posted okay. on the whiteboard, so you'll see that. And then we also have um, the students have their academic notebooks, and then they record the learning goal and their academic notebooks, and we're going to be using those notebooks in class too, so you'll see that at different points when we do different activities. Um, we also have um, a scale that's posted on the front board, and they also have that in their academic notebook, and I provided you a copy of the scale in the folder Great. as well. Got it. Um, and then um, we'll be referring to the scale um, in the beginning of the lesson, and then we'll also go back to it um, at the end of the lesson. So uh, being that this is... Um they have some prerequisite knowledge, but this is obviously a new topic. Yes. Are they going to, am I going to see them rating themselves at all on this scale today, or is it too early for that? You'll see, your, you'll see them um, rate themselves at the end of the lesson because um, it's kind of like day two that you're coming into this particular lesson chunk. Um, the, the day that, the previous day, we're actually, I'm going to be introducing this particular lesson chunk, and that's when we're going to be going over the scale. So they're really rating themselves um, initially there and then um, at the end of the lesson that you're going to see the students are going to be going back to the scale and then rating themselves then so Great. is that more at the end rather than at the beginning okay. I, I just maybe mark this down for me as in our post conference this year you are allowed to bring in um, which is a little different than last year artifacts to contribute to um, the lesson and, and, and give me more information uh, on the lesson so if you could can you grab one of the students' notebooks for me oh, yeah, so I can sure. just get a, get a better idea of how you're tracking progress? And is that something consistent? They always use these notebooks yes. to contract? Okay, great. Yes. Okay. Um, rules and procedures. I mean, I've been in your class many times, so I know the kids are well-behaved. There's there's uh, obviously some, some procedures. Is there anything different this in this lesson that I'm going to be seeing um, as far as maintaining rules, procedures, uh, arrangement of desks due to the lesson, something that I should be on the lookout for? Um, nothing too different. Uh, we are going to have a couple of transitions, so you're going to see like uh, my transition procedures. Okay. Um, we are going to have um, two different types of group processing. They're going to have um, a chance to um, process information with their um, shoulder buddies, and then we're also going to do an activity where they're processing in groups of three and four. So there's going to be um, some quick slight movement when we go to that activity. So. so when you do the group processing or the turn and talk, is that something that, that you've told them kind of how to do that? Oh, they've the been doing rules? it since the beginning. Yeah, we established those group procedures. Now knowing the makeup of your, your classroom um, with some language impaired and some uh, you know ESE students, do you set those, tab those turn and talk partners or do they pick their own? Um, we initially set, um, I've set them. Um, depending on the activity, um, I'll let them choose if they if they want to choose a different partner. But otherwise, they're kind of already positioned um, in an intentional way um, to process that information. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to get into the meat of your lesson. So we've been, we've been talking a lot this year at our school about what design question we're in. And we've got those three different design questions where kids are interacting with new knowledge, they're deepening knowledge, or they're creating and generating hypothesis. So it, when, when I come in tomorrow, what design question um, will you primarily be in? I brought the domain one here for me just to reference okay. you because yeah. I don't have it exactly memorized yeah, yeah, no, yet. We're, we're I'm still all, that's why we're in the it. growth mode. Okay. Yeah. Um, but knowing that this is a new lesson chunk, that I'm moving into, and that I just started it really yesterday, introducing this lesson chunk. And I was going through it, and I was kind of doing um, some um, visual activity and some previewing. And today, I'm really going off of that previewing that we did um, yesterday, and then also for their homework assignment, 
So with that, I believe that I'm still in DQ2 with this particular okay. sequence that I'm in right now. All right. So let's talk through that. So uh, yesterday, you did a lot with setting up the learning goal, obviously right. handed out the scale, yes. talked to them about any prerequisite knowledge that they might have had. Right. Um, tell me about this homework last night. What, what were they doing? I actually found an article, and the article really summarized um, like the life of um, colonists okay. in the three different regions in New England, um, in the middle colonies, and in the southern colonies. And so their assignment was, and also had visuals in there, some pictures um, for students to look at. And their assignment was to go home and read that and then underline what they think. Um, is the important information or, you know, key terms that's in the article. Um, and it's just, you know, what they think, you know, is there's no pressure with that. And then, um, so what you're going to see is we're going to start the lesson um, actually going off of that article. And um, then um, students will have a highlighter. And we're going to read through the, the article. And then I'm going to explicitly tell them okay. what to highlight. Um, and then so... After we go through that process of me identifying the critical information as we read through it, then they're going to turn to their shoulder partners, and then they're just going to process, you know, and do some um, comparative analysis of what they underlined and why they thought that was important compared to um, what they highlighted in the class and to see, you know, similarities or differences. Okay. So here's a little quiz. What elements have we just discussed? Previewing. Okay. Element eight. Mm -hmm. Identifying critical information, element six. I guess the shoulder partners would be organizing students mm -hmm. to interact. Yep. Um, I said similarities and differences, but that's in DQ3. I don't know if that... Yeah, we're, well, we're, we're starting that, but we're probably not doing that for deepening purposes. We're kind of more doing that still in that previewing purpose, okay. you know, or, or, or maybe even a little bit about reflecting on how we're learning. Um, so, but we're all, you also talked a lot about chunking content. Now, I'm not going to really be able to see that, but you've, you've talked that through with me, how you purposely chunk this content, and it builds upon previously chunked content, all right? So besides um, six, seven, eight, and nine, and, and you know, what I'm hearing you saying is you're really doing these things simultaneously. Like, you're not saying, well, now I'm identifying critical, and now I'm previewing. You're right. kind of doing it at the same time. You had them preview for the purpose of now identifying that critical information. And by turning and talking to their partner, you're still working through that process of identifying what's critical and what's not. So when we talk about dominant elements mm -hmm. tomorrow and what I'm going to be specifically looking for, I'm gonna be looking for what you just told me you're gonna be doing, which is primarily six, seven, um, and eight uh, with, with the knowledge that we've already done some chunking of content for this lesson. When we look at the rest of those, and I definitely do not have to see them, let's make it clear, I'm not expecting to see all of DQ2 in one lesson. That would okay. be very hard to accomplish, not impossible. Um, but we, we do want to make sure, as we've, as we've talked about in Lunch and Learns and at faculty meetings, that when we're in DQ2 and we're truly interacting with new knowledge, students need to go through that whole cycle. Not in order, but they need to go through that cycle. So do you believe we'll be seeing um, any of the others in DQ2, such as processing of new information, elaborating. Will we be seeing any more of those? Yes. Um, after they do that shoulder partner um, processing, we are then going to transition into another activity, and that's when we're going to transition into groups of three and four. Okay. Um, and then what I've done is um, I gather different information and pictures and visuals about each of the um, three regional colonies, and each group is going to have a different region. So there might be groups that have like um, two groups that have, you know, New England, two groups that have middle, two groups that have the southern colonies. Um, and then they're going to um, go through that information that's in their folder, and then they're going to categorize. Oh, okay. um, they're going to look through the information. They're going to categorize. Is this um, geographical features of the region? Of the region? Are these physical features? Are these housing? Um, different clues to get ideas of really what are the characteristics of that region. And so they have strips of paper, and um, they're going to write down the information on the strips of paper, like that particular characteristic, and then they're going to categorize it, um, you know, different pa pieces of paper That's on the table activity. and categorize it. Okay. So that will give them, I, I think that would be element 10 where they're processing the new yeah, information. Yeah, they definitely are processing. 
And if you're going to have them make any inferences on that information, I don't know if I heard that or not, we would be in elaborating. So, um, so we're primarily going to be in DQ2, and I'm going to be looking for 6, 7, um, 8, and 10, and maybe based on their conversations getting in a little bit to 11. Um, so, and, and then in a future lesson, I'm sure you, you would do something to get them into 12 and 13. Okay, so the last thing, um, I, well, actually two more things. Um, your deliberate practice this year, as we've talked about in our previous conferences on scales, yes. which is a really, a really good one. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make that a dominant element as well, because you already told me that we're going to be looking at, at scales and, and, yes. and learning goals and things of that nature. Is there anything that you've done um, since our conversation about deliberate practice to prepare yourself for or, or improve yourself in the creation and implementation of scales in the classroom? Yes, last year I was trying out scales and um, they were like generic scales. Mm -hmm. They really weren't content Our specific. Our whole school was there. Yes, and so the more I've been learning about it and different things that I've been reading and the videos I've been watching, um, I've really been trying to tailor the scales to make it more content based Good. and then also making it more student friendly with, with um, um, the language that's in there. So I've been really working with that and then um, really incorporating it more in the actual lessons for students you know to look at it at the beginning and the middle and the end to really reflect on their learning and then particularly to track their progress so I've been trying to yeah. remember to incorporate that in the lessons. Have you reached out to any colleagues um, that, that are, are, are just a little further along on their scale on scales um, like I know Mrs., uh, Mr. Astley is really good at this Yes, and he is very helpful in mm -hmm. our PLC meetings, and he actually is our PLC facilitator, and he really takes the time, um, like extra time, you know, um, to answer some questions and to help me process and figure things out. So Great. Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to be looking at um, scales, and I'm going to be, that's why I kind of also wanted to see a student uh, example in the post-conference, so we'll, we'll okay. kind of make that one of your artifacts that you can bring in. And I, we're going to be looking at, we already said dominant elements, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Um, now, I, I just also want you to know that, you know, as, as this lesson goes on, you, are, you could potentially get further than you thought. You could potentially not get as far as you thought. So if I see other elements in DQ2, or if you happen to not even know it and dip, dip into DQ3, I'm going to go ahead and, and write that information down. Um, and if I have enough information, I might go ahead and score that. But, oh, okay. but I'm for sure going to try to score the ones that we've agreed are going to be your dominant elements and your deliberate practice goal for the year. All right. Perfect. So we've talked about routine events. We've talked a little bit about um, maintaining classroom uh, procedures. And you told me how this is going to be set up and how you're grouping students. Talk about engagement a little bit. Are you pre-planning any engagement activities? Um, or are we just going to kind of see how it goes and implement an engagement activity if need be? Well, um, engagement, um, but actually before I start every lesson, I do like a review. And um, I actually um, engage them with different questionings mm -hmm. and get them going and they're thinking that way, um, getting some types of, of response questionings, um, response chaining questioning techniques. Um, and then also, I think by having them process with partners yeah. and then move around and go to groups and really talking with e with each other, I think that that's rather engaging Good. Um, for them as well. Okay. So what we've discussed is DQ1 um, with communicating learning goals and feedback, and those are considered routine events. We've talked about DQ6, establishing rules and procedures. We have identified that DQ2, um, which is interacting with new knowledge, is primarily where this lesson is going to take place. We've discussed the dominant elements and the deliberate practice that we're going to see. We discussed a little bit about how we believe this the way this uh, this uh, lesson is structured is going to be pretty engaging. Um, the last thing I'm going to ask you about, just because um, we do have, you know, when we're talking about six out of 22 that are ESC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, how are you going to work with those students and communicate high expectations mm -hmm. for all students? I mean, I know that we all struggle with that. Is mm -hmm. that something that you're purposely mm -hmm. planning and, you know, purposely purposely planning to involve those students and make sure that those expectation levels are, are high for them as well. I think that was something that we definitely set in the beginning of the year and part of that is to make um, all those students feel safe. That mm -hmm. when they walk in the classroom that it's a safe zone. 
um, I'm not going to force them to do anything that they don't want to do, but at the same time, um, you know, encourage them, you know, to set goals, um, individual goals, mm-hmm. and to maintain high expectations for themselves. And then also that if they if they if they fail at a particular task, that it's okay, and 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 to make sure that we learn from that, and that we're all in this together. So I think it's like an ongoing, continuous. Um, climate or culture that we've established in the classroom. Great. All right. Is there anything else um, before we conclude that you would like to inform me of? I mean, we were pretty comprehensive in our discussions. Anything else I should know about tomorrow? Um, I think that's it. Okay. Well, I look forward to coming in tomorrow, and um, our post conference is scheduled for the following morning. Um, and, and I just want to make sure you know that anything that you want to bring in that post conference in terms of artifacts. Um, anything you've maybe thought about and said, you know, I would have done that a little differently, so I've created this for future okay. lessons. We, okay. can, we can talk about all those things, because okay. if we're strictly in a growth mindset, um, we should always be willing to talk and, and say, well, what, what truthfully could we have added to this that I'm going to do again if I have to plan a similar unit? Okay? Sounds all right. Great. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thank okay. you. All right.